Good afternoon and welcome to another Texas Baptist Annual Meeting online workshop. Thank you for joining us. Since we're not able to gather in person this fall, we're bringing virtual workshops to you each week between now and November 16th, 17th, which are the dates of the Texas Baptist Annual Meeting business and celebration sessions. Please tune in each Tuesday at 2 p.m. for valuable insights from ministry leaders who are here to help you and your congregation. You can learn more about this and other workshops as well as sign up for the annual meeting updates at txv.org forward slash am. My name is Colleen Wall and I serve as the Director of Conference and Event Planning here at Texas Baptist. I will serve as your moderator for today. Joining me for our workshop is Tamiko Jones, the WMU Executive Director for Texas, WMU of Texas, and Julie Forrester, Executive Director of the Christian Women Job Corps of Greater Arlington. Our workshop today is titled WMU of Texas Partners in Missions. Just a little housekeeping as we get started, please note that participants will be muted throughout this presentation. For technical assistance only, text 214-773-8433. Again, for technical assistance only, text 214-773-8433, and we will try our best to assist you. This workshop is being recorded and will be available on the annual meeting website, again, at txb.org forward slash am. At the conclusion of the teaching portion of this workshop, we invite you to join us for a brief Q&A with our presenters, Tamiko Jones and Julie Forrester. You are welcome to type your questions during the teaching portion of the Q at the teaching portion of the workshop by using the Q&A function that is at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Questions will only be seen by the host, and as time allows, the presenters will address as many questions as possible. We want to thank our sponsors today, Hawaiian Baptist Academy, and WMU of Texas. Thank you again for taking time out of your schedule to join us today, so let's get started. Hello, Texas Baptist family. I am Tamiko Jones, and I serve as Executive Director Treasurer for WMU of Texas. Wow, 2020, who would have imagined we would be doing this conference virtually? But I am thankful that God provides, and he has given us an opportunity to be able to come to you in this manner. Thank you for joining us for this workshop. The title of the workshop is WMU of Texas, Partners in Missions. We are thankful to be able to partner with you as you serve your communities. At WMU of Texas, we are passionate about empowering Christ followers to radically participate in the mission of God. And that happens right where you are. I know oftentimes the attention is given to foreign missions or international missions as we call it, but right where you are, you are able to serve. And so WMU of Texas seeks to walk alongside you as you are meeting the needs in your community. What does that look like? It could look like missions discipleship. It could look like many things, but I am grateful that as we adjust in this year of 2020, we continue to adjust in the ways that we meet the needs of our communities. So thank you for joining us. The mission of WMU of Texas is we make disciples who make disciples. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Well, as you think about making disciples, I know we're all familiar with the mandate in Matthew 28. It tells us that we are to go and make disciples for Jesus Christ, baptizing them in his name. And so as we do that, we're not at desiring for it to stop right with the one person that we are meeting. But we hope, we hope and we pray that it continues on. It's kind of like a chain reaction. 
Once you impact one life, we pray that that one life goes on to impact others. And so as you think about that mission, we have some values that we uphold. Jesus as Lord and the Bible as the guide for life, ministry, and missions. Prayer that produces intimacy with God and intercession for others. Personal involvement in missions locally and globally. Ongoing, relevant missions, education for all ages and all ethnic groups. Support of missionaries and their families. We're really a stickler about that one. The role of women and girls in God's plan for the nations. And so it is our hope that our service to God creates an urgency in you to live on mission. So how do we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. We serve in several ways. A couple of years ago, we decided that it was very important that if we were on an elevator with you, we needed to be able to tell you what WMU of Texas stood for, what we did on a day-to-day basis in a very short amount of time. So you can kind of call it an elevator speech. And so we came up with the three E's. If we can remember those three E's, then we can fit everything that we do into one of those categories. And so as you see on the screen here, the first E is engage. Engage others in local missions. And we do that in several ways. And I'll break that down in just a moment. But engage in local missions. The second is to establish partnerships for missions. It's very important to partner. We started this session talking about being partners in missions. I I truly believe that we can do more together. And then the third E is empower. Empower others for worldwide missions. So not only are we attempting to walk alongside you as you take care of home, but we also want to be able to empower you, to equip you, and to help you reach others across our world. And so with that said, let's talk about engaging others in local missions. You see in your screen there two examples. Um, First of all, we'll talk about missions education or missions discipleship. You'll hear it termed now. With missions discipleship, we work with you as you reach all age groups in your church. And so we go from our mission friends or our preschool level all the way up to adults. And so Everyone in your church, not just women, can participate in missions with WMU of Texas. I'm so glad to be able to say that. You have church planters that are looking for an opportunity to be able to share missions with their new congregations. And so with that being said, you can use all of the materials that we borrow or that we use from National WMU. We are so thankful that National WMU provides curriculum for our churches to use. And so we're, we're ecstatic to be able to promote that. And so that's how we work through missions discipleship with you as you reach the people in your congregation. But over the last few years, we have gained an opportunity to be able to share with individuals, not just groups. Are any of you in churches that no longer have a WMU of Texas small group? Well, it's very important that you hear me when I say individuals can participate with us as well. And there's a new model that several communities, especially here in North Texas, are participating in, and we call those community groups. So if your church does not have a mission small group, then you're able to join with other churches and have a community group. In that community group, you're doing the same things. You're studying through the missions discipleship material, but then the prayer is that as your community group grows, then you're able to splinter off and have other groups as well. And so if you need more information about that, please do contact us about the community groups. And then many of you are familiar with the ministries that we uh, serve through. Um, One of those ministries, is CWJC, and we'll hear more about that in just a moment. But Christian Women's and Christian Men's Job Corps, we understand the the mighty impact that those two organizations have had across our state. At this particular point, we have 54 active sites in the state of Texas. And for me, as, as I talk to you, that's a hallelujah moment, because that tells me that all across the state, 
God is working through individuals just like you to serve their communities, to help individuals have self-sustaining uh, income, to be able to, to do the things that God is calling them to do, equipping them, not just in skills for the workforce, but also helping them in Bible study. And so if you, if you need more information about any of these ministries, please contact us. We are so excited about being able to once again, return to your churches and share with you all that we have to offer and to, to help walk alongside of you. And so we also have what's called Sisters Who Care. Sisters Who Care is the African-American expression of WMU of Texas in the African-American churches. Texas Baptist has over 5,000 churches that we are, we are blessed to be able to serve, but there are so many uh, ethnic churches and, and, and multicultural churches. And so Sisters Who Care seeks to serve the African-American churches in the same way that Women on Mission will serve in all of our churches. And so that is the African-American expression of that. And then as you think about the many projects that we have throughout the year, some of them are ongoing, meaning they're annual projects, but then others are those things that may come up based upon partnerships we have because of, of natural disasters or other things. And so one of those is the Women's Build annually, and this would be the 10th year, Annually, we serve in the Panitas area of South Texas, down in the valley outside of McAllen, and we build a home, a team of women, build a home for a deserving family through a partnership with Buckner International. And so we are so excited about that. We don't know what 2020 looks like just yet, but we are excited that this is the 10th year that God has allowed us to do that. And so there are so many other ways that you might engage with us but give us a call and we'll share those with you. One last thing in the Engage category is called Embrace. Embrace is a mentoring model that we've developed in partnership with Texas Baptist Urban Ministries. And this is our attempt to bridge the gap between high school to, to mid-age adult. And so there are young adults that we wanna make sure that we stay in contact with and Embrace is our way to do that. And so you are able this fall to uh, download the material. And so if you have questions about how to do that, give us a call about that as well. But we hope that you will look at this particular material and use that as well. The established piece, we've talked about partnerships. Um, we are excited to be on college campuses. We, we love to come to your church and partner with you in missions in your community. But one particular partnership we want to highlight is our renewed partnership with Southwestern uh, Theological Seminary there in Fort Worth. And you'll see a picture there. That picture is a house on the campus that we are looking forward to rehabbing to house our stateside missionaries as they are pursuing an education there at the seminary. You'll see the, the quote there, it's called Mary's House, being named for Mary Hill Davis, who I'll talk about in just a little bit, but hear more later about that. Um, and we look forward to sharing more about that particular partnership with you. And finally, we have Empower, Empower Others for Worldwide Missions. Recently, we started a partnership with the Baptist Conventions of U of Uganda and Tanzania. And so there in East Africa, we're looking forward to discipling their leaders, their women that will then go out and disciple others in their native countries. And so pray with us about that partnership. We're just getting started, but we are excited about what God will do through Texas Baptist, through you there in East Africa. Other partnerships um, that we will continue that help to empower us for worldwide missions include our world craft, we no longer do the, the markets there in your particular church um, because we, we just could not sustain that. However, you have an opportunity to host your own market and we will help to empower you to make that happen. And by doing that, you're able to support a local CWJC. I know you want to hear more about that. And so we, we'd love to share more about that with you. Um, that would benefit not only World Crafts and the artisans that are preparing products around the world, but also right here at home, which is our goal to support those CWJC sites. And so empowering others for worldwide missions. 
And so with that being said, I'm excited to just share more information about Christian Women's Job Corps. At this particular time, we're going to talk to Julie Forrester, who is the executive director for the CWJC of Greater Arlington. Julie, we are so excited to be able to talk to you today. It's one thing to hear about the ministries, but to be able to share with someone that's leading one of the ministries in our local area, it's going to be a blessing for everyone listening today. Well, I appreciate the invitation. I'm really happy to be here today. Thank well, you. Good. Thank you, ma'am. And so we're just going to get started. Is that okay? okay? Sure. Well, the first question I have, how did you first become involved with CWJC? It's a really interesting story. Mm -hmm. Um like many others, I think, in the area, I didn't know what CWJC was. Mm -hmm. And I was at, my son was a high school baseball player. Mm -hmm. I was at a baseball game, mm -hmm. and another mother was there. And we were talking, and she said, CWJC, they need a new executive director, and I think you would be perfect. Mm -hmm. My husband and I uh, had worked with Mission Arlington for mm -hmm. many years mm -hmm. and had the experience of ministry to adults. And because of that experience, she thought that I would be a good fit. So we visited about it. I did a lot of praying. I uh, went to several friends of mine who mm -hmm. I consider mentors, and then it, it just happened. So it was very interesting the way the Lord orchestrated mm -hmm. that conversation at a baseball game. At a baseball game. <laughs> yes. God does that to us, <laughs> I know, doesn't he? I know. He fixes it in such a way where the answer is really plain yes. that we're supposed to do a certain That's thing. Right. So yes. I'm glad you were obedient I, to what Yes. You to do. Yes. Yeah. Been here. Uh, been executive director since uh, 2009, July okay. of 2009. Okay. All right. All right. Well, tell us about the Greater Arlington CWJC. Uh, you know what? What is your mission? What What do you do? You know, as you mentioned uh, in the opening, fall of 2020 mm -hmm. looks entirely different yeah. than we have looked in the past. Um, but I fully expect and anticipate that in the spring of 2021, we'll be able to return mm -hmm. uh, to our site. We are going to offer classes virtually okay. this fall. Mm -hmm. um, but um, in normal times, we offer our program twice a year. It's okay. a 12-week program. Mm -hmm. We offer day, evening, and an intermediate level mm -hmm. of job skills training mm -hmm. and personal development. Um, we are blessed with qualified teachers, mm -hmm. uh, volunteers, That's I'm good. paid staff, um, but all of our teachers are volunteers, mm -hmm. um, but very skilled in their fields. Mm -hmm. And we teach computer training. Mm -hmm. We'll help the ladies write a resume. We'll practice on interviewing skills. We even have one day where we um, do mock interviews. Mm -hmm. And I tell the ladies at the inter uh, their initial interview, you cannot be absent that day. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody has to participate in that. Mm -hmm. um, we have personal development classes. Of course, we start every day with Bible study most meaningful class of the day. Mm -hmm. But we have classes also in uh, time management, mm -hmm. boundaries, money management, yeah. communication styles. Mm -hmm. We try to offer classes to reach the whole woman, mm -hmm. um, whatever, whatever we can do to help facilitate growth mm -hmm. uh, in, in each of the ladies that participates with us. Wonderful. I think I'm ready to sign up because uh, some of the topics you mentioned, uh, very timely yes. uh, right now, yes. boundaries. That's right. very important. And right. so as you think about the participants that come to you or, or you recruit, how, how do you get your participants? In the past, mm -hmm. we have one of the main ways that we have done that is to attend local job fairs. In fact, that's one of the um, activities that we go as a class. Mm -hmm. We've practiced on our computer skills. We've perfected the resume. We've shopped in our clothing boutique, which I'll talk about yes. in a minute. And then we will go as a class. So mm -hmm. it's a great activity 
kind of safety in numbers. Mm -hmm. Whether they find a job at the particular job fair or not, it's a really good exercise for them. Mm -hmm. Well, we will represent ourselves, CWJC. And so we'll have ladies sign up as being, showing an interest in our Mm -hmm. upcoming semester. So that's one of the main ways that we have done that. Mm -hmm. Um, But again, so much of it is networking and Mm -hmm. word of mouth. We have a database of email addresses. Mm -hmm. We partner with church churches in our area. And so we just put the word out. Uh, we have a, a great volunteer who does our artwork mm-hmm. and we'll put flyers out in the community um, and uh, just with different agencies uh, in the Arlington area. And that's mm-hmm. how we advertise. Yeah. And I, having visited your site at least once, yes. um, I am aware of all of the the products that you have there in your location. Um, you have T-shirts, you have different things with CWJC on it. We do. And, you know, love to shop. So yes, yes. <laughs> tell us about that. And, and how are you funded? Kind of uh-huh. mesh that into this. In fact, I wanted to wear one of my CWJC t-shirts today, but yeah. thought it, I needed to dress up a little Aww. bit more. <laughs> um, but it, that started out with actually a graduate mm-hmm. who had a, um, I think cheerleading, she mm-hmm. made cheerleading outfits um, was her main business. Mm-hmm. But we have just um, continued that we now have sweatshirts, mm-hmm. T-shirts of different sizes and categories. And so we encourage all of our ladies, we provide a T-shirt. If they can pay, that's great. If not, we still provide the T-shirt for them. That way you can go to a grocery store and somebody can say, what in the world is CWJC? Mm -hmm. And then you're prepared with your elevator speech. Right. (laughs) Um, We are funded. uh, We are a 501c3. Mm -hmm. I know that not all of the CWJC locations Mm -hmm. are. Uh, but we have been uh, pretty much since inception, mm-hmm. and we are uh, therefore self-funding. Okay. Uh, we're supported by churches, mm-hmm. area churches, um, individuals, of course, mm-hmm. and corporations. Okay. Um, our board of directors is very active. One of their main responsibilities is that of fundraising, okay. our fundraising events. Okay. And we have four major fundraising events mm-hmm. each year. This year, of course, being different, we've had to postpone our fundraising activities. Um, But we have a golf tournament in the summer. We have a uh, gospel homecoming concert, which we have done for, oh, my goodness, probably the past 12 years or so. Um, Doesn't raise a lot of money, but uh, really speaks to a lot of our supporters who are, um, you know, just... uh, uh, enjoy the gospel music, Mm -hmm. and uh, we enjoy putting that concert on for Mm -hmm. them. We also have a luncheon, a women's luncheon. Mm -hmm. We call it our Ruby Awards Luncheon, Mm -hmm. uh, patterned after Proverbs 31, which talks about a woman being more precious than Ruby. We honor Christian women Mm -hmm. in the workforce, just Mm -hmm. those who are out there every day, doing their thing, um, but living their faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we'll prepare raffle baskets. And uh, that is one of our of our main fundraisers. Uh, In the spring, we uh, the luncheon that we have postponed for this year in the spring, we will honor first responders, Mm -hmm. uh, women who um, are in the community Mm -hmm. who really, really served us in in 2020. Mm -hmm. So not only are you helping those that come as participants, but you're engaged with the community in in various ways. So that is so important. We could not do it without the community. Yes. Well, amen. (laughs) Um, Describe the type of volunteers you need. We are always looking for volunteers. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say, you know, just in looking back to last year, Mm -hmm. I think we had over 200 volunteers Mm -hmm. serving over 4,000 volunteer hours. Mm -hmm. And really, you look at us, we're a fairly small Mm -hmm. nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. Um, Teachers, we always need computer lab helpers, Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, uh, with the job skills training side Mm -hmm. of the CWJC program. Um, computer training. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's not a huge commitment. You can volunteer for a couple of hours a week, Mm -hmm. or you can volunteer for longer than that. Mm -hmm. Um, We try to make it available to as many people as we can in their in their schedule. So obviously teachers, Mm -hmm. uh, Bible study teachers, I have them waiting in the wings. (laughs) Yeah, it seems like everybody wants to teach Bible study. So I think we're good with that. But um, I would say lunches. 
We try to help our ladies. Uh, They will bring their lunches during the week, Mm -hmm. but we like to serve them uh, with a big surprise on Friday afternoons. And uh, so we have, you know, meals, snacks for Mm -hmm. our evening class. Um, Board members, Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, our board members are very active uh, Mm -hmm. in in our organization. We have a three-year term Mm -hmm. for our board members. And so we're always looking for different skill sets um, in a board member. Uh, you talk about men. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a couple of men who are. I didn't are, talk about men. Well, you mentioned okay. that. <laughs> yes. Um, but, you know, we're always looking for men mm-hmm. uh, to be involved. I think it's so very important for women to understand and to see men mm-hmm. who are in appropriate roles Very important. Um, in, mm-hmm. in the community and mm-hmm. in their relationship with women. Uh, so we, um, we love for men to come on board mm-hmm. uh, with us. Well, Julie, wow, this, you know, it makes people want to come and volunteer so. just, just to hear the impact that you are having just in your community. You know, and I would say, too, uh, you have a volunteer. I, people laugh at me because um, maybe a woman would come and donate clothing. Mm-hmm. And boy, I immediately would pull her aside and give her a flyer and talk to her about volunteer mm-hmm. opportunities. Mm-hmm. And as you know, once you involve yourself, mm-hmm. yeah. You catch it. You catch it. You catch it. Mm-hmm. And um, and then you tell others yes. about it. Okay. And um, that's the way that we get so many of our volunteers um, are from from women and men mm-hmm. who are already volunteering with us. Wow. Well, I know we've talked about some of the ways, Julie, but as you are talking to the churches and possibly interested individuals in their communities wanting to start a CWJC, mm-hmm. number one, how can churches continue to help you if you have not mentioned a way? Mm-hmm. And then number two, why would a community need a CWJC? Oh, <laughs> I think especially in this time we all need hope. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine, I can't imagine not having a relationship with my Lord and not having that hope. And so if nothing else, establish, look into establishing a CWJC in your community. Our program is entirely tuition free and can benefit so many women in so many ways. And I think about churches out there. You know that there are women on both ends of the spectrum in your church, women who can volunteer, women who can help financially, and men, (laughs) but then also women who can really benefit from a program like CWJC. Uh, So please, please get in touch with me, get in touch with uh, Tamika. There are just uh, so many opportunities to be able to serve your community, no matter how small your community is, how large your community is, uh, that should not be a hindrance to finding out more about CWJC. Wow. Well, 2020 definitely brought some changes for us. Um, Our director for the state, Becky Ellison, did pass away this year. And I know Becky was very passionate about CWJC, CMJC, which is the men's version of uh, Christian Women's Job Corps, and then also Thrive 2-7. She was very passionate. So I'll, I'll end our time today with just asking you, Julie. Yes. What brings you joy in serving with CWJC of Greater Arlington? Wow, that's a loaded question. I um, am blessed every day to walk into our building. Um, The spirit of the Lord is so obvious there. We have, as you enter our building, we have Jeremiah 29, 11 up on the wall. So that's the first thing that you see uh, when you walk in. Um, But just to kind of stand back and be uh, notice the relationship building that is happening. Um, Our classes have uh, 15 women in them. They spend a lot of time together. So there's a lot of opportunity for them to uh, build relationships. Mm -hmm. We focus on the future and hope Mm -hmm. and joy Mm -hmm. 
And I tell them if they've got stuff, leave it at the door Mm -hmm. because we are about second chances and we are moving forward. And uh, we will come each day with a thankful heart, all of us, Mm -hmm. volunteers, participants, and um, we will enjoy each other's company Mm -hmm. as we're learning about the Lord. You know, um, Bible study, I love that Bible study is required. Mm -hmm. That's who we are. But a woman does not have to be a Christian to participate in our program. But Bible study is part of our program. Mm -hmm. And so she hears the word every day. She is prayed for in every class, Mm -hmm. whether it be a computer class Mm -hmm. or a Bible study class. And to witness growth in someone's relationship with the Lord Mm -hmm. or to learn of a new Christian, a woman who has just found the Lord. Mm -hmm. How does it get better than that? Uh, You know, I don't think it does. Yeah, I don't think it does either. <laughs> so that's that's part of my joy. That's yes. what comes to mind yeah. uh, as we talk about this. God has blessed us to be able to oh serve. We, we don't have to do what we no. do, but we get to do that's what right. we do. And that's so we right. are blessed for that. We are blessed. Yes, ma'am. So thank you all for joining us as we talked to Julie and heard from her. If you need any information about supporting a CWJC site or starting one, please give us a call. Well, I hope you've gained something from everything that has been shared with you today. I want to wrap up our time together just by giving just a little educational piece on Mary Hill Davis. If you know anything about WMU of Texas, we could not do what we do without your support through the Mary Hill Davis offering. And so Mary Hill Davis, who was she? Mary was the WMU of Texas president from 1906 to 1931. Her heart for missions and people was evident in everything that she did. You see a quote here from 1923. She said, it seems fitting in this time of world chaos and untoward tendencies that we should call ourselves back to a new sense of loyalty to our cause. The feeling of unrest in social and political and religious life was never quite so sinister nor so aggressive as it is today. If there ever was a time when Christian hearts should call themselves back to a sense of loyalty to God and our organized work, that time is now upon us. It sounds like that could have been written in 2020. And so her heart for missions helped her to understand Texas was a vast mission field, and it still is. Not only did she stir women to give and pray for missions, but she also encouraged leaders to take care of orphans, schools in Texas, as well as China and retired pastors living in poverty. Mary Hill Davis passed away in 1934, and during a memorial service held at the WMU Convention of Houston in 1935, the state missions offering was renamed the Mary Hill Davis Offering. Today, her remarkable leadership continues to inspire Texas Baptists to give, to pray, and to serve. And so you may ask, how do I participate in Texas missions? You participate by praying, We covet your prayers. It is necessary that that be the first step because God will lead us in how we are to support and how we are to impact our state through the gifts that he has given us. So we ask that you pray. You pray not only for the work that God is doing through you and through others across this state, but also the work that we are doing and that we hear clearly from him in the ways that we are to serve. And then you are able to promote the offering. I'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment, but as you promote, remember why we do what we do. We do that so that we can make disciples who make disciples. And through the offering, we we not only are able to do the work of WMU of Texas, but we are to help over 80 ministries, most of which are through Texas Baptist, serve across the state of Texas. And then give. You can give of your time, you can support physically at a location, but you also can give of your finances by helping to support the ministries across the state. And so you see here our theme, I am Texas missions. I am Texas missions, just like Mary. We can all participate in Texas missions. The recurring theme, I am Texas missions, 
is a challenge for you and your congregations to be a part of God's story right here in Texas. Now, the time of this taping, we had not yet come upon the emphasis week, that week of prayer in September. However, I want you to hear me when I say you can participate in the Mary Hill Davis offering all year long. And so we thank you for during, doing that. The Mary Hill Davis offering for Texas Missions experienced a year of growth in 2019. Your generous gifts impacted 80 mission opportunities across Texas. You empowered associations to provide training for pastors and lay leaders, bounced student disaster recovery groups to aid in the rehab efforts for communities impacted by devastating storms and go now missions to continue to mobilize Texas University students as missionaries in the U.S. and abroad. With this current theme, we appreciate your partnership in this Mary Hill Davis offering for Texas missions for 2020. You see, our goal is $3.6 million. We know that we can do it with your help. Pray with us you are encouraged to go with us. But in promoting the Mary Hill Davis offering, you can set a church offering goal. Even now, it's not too late to do that. You can develop a promotional strategy. There are many resources and videos available on our website. You see one of the sites there, IamTexasMissions.org. It's a new site for 2020 where you can download all of the resources you may need to be able to promote in your church and in your community the work of God through WMU of Texas. And then just download those available vid videos, study, and prayer guides. Join us in this work. We thank you for all that you have done. And if you have any questions or comments, we look forward to hearing from you. Give us a call. You see our websites there, as well as social media impact through Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Thank you again, Texas Baptist, for all you've done. Well, I'm David Scott. I am the director of Bounce Student Disaster Recovery and Bounce Student Church Planting for Texas Baptist. Bounce is a prepackaged mission experience where we mobilize student youth groups to do a couple of different things. Uh, we mobilize to, uh, to go into communities that have been affected by disaster to help with the long-term recovery. We also go into communities and do community rehabilitation. Uh, for, uh, for folks who are unable to repair their homes on their own. Anytime a church uh, comes to Bounce, uh, uh, we're excited to mobilize their students for those hands-on mission opportunities, and it's hard work. First off, we're here to glorify God and serve Him, and uh, we're doing that here today by uh, building a ramp for a gentleman who's in a wheelchair to help get up to his door, yes. and we just have a bunch of people doing a bunch of different stuff because not everyone can work there, so we have people digging poles, digging trenches, Benches, drilling stuff, nailing stuff, uh, raking leaves, talking to the kids next door. So yeah, it's really great. We've got a great crew doing great stuff. We're at Miss Ollie's house and we have scraped and sanded and um, we pulled stuff away from the house and we've got it primered yesterday and we're putting paint on today and it is starting to look great. We're just taking a minute to uh, get some lunch and uh, then we're going to go again. These kids have been up since about 5.30 this morning. We're out of the church at 7 o'clock and going hard and we'll go until four o'clock today and then everybody's going to sleep good tonight. It's going to be awesome. We go in and partner with different uh, agencies who provide us with materials and uh, the projects and we go in and bring the labor and uh, mobilize students to uh, uh, to make those repairs. We appreciate the opportunity to, to partner with WMU and them allow us to, to have some funding to assist us uh, in mobilizing students. They provide some funding to help our, our volunteer coordinators go in uh, initially to select the projects that we're going to be working on. They help us with some funding that helps us with our collegiate staff interns. They also provide us with some money that we're able to scholarship uh, some uh, of our Hispanic churches.
coaches and uh, their students. This one's been different. I mean, there's been a lot more people interacting this time, and it's just, it's really a miracle that we're able to come out here and just help people out like this. And even just talking to the kids next door and trying to have an impact on them and share my faith and why we do this and what love from the Lord really looks like is something that I think is really important to share with others. We talk about restoring hope, rebuilding communities, and reflecting Christ. And those are the things that we want to accomplish through Bounce. Thank you, Texas Baptist, for giving to the Mary Hill Davis offering. That's some that was some great information and I am it's exciting especially having the kids there at the end the one phrase that the one young lady said about showing love from the Lord that just really kind of touched me um, um, I'm pleased to be joined with by Tomika Jones she's the executive director treasurer of WMU of Texas and Julie Forrester, who is the Executive Director of the Christian Women Job Corps of Greater Arlington. Welcome to Miko and Julie. Um, as a reminder to our participants, if you have a question, please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, those questions will be seen by the host and we'll try to answer as many of those questions as we can. So a couple questions that have come in already. Um, we have one question from, uh, this is probably directed to Julie, um, from Joe Berry. Does CWJC offer job listings for graduates? We do the best that we can to partner with uh, agencies and corporations in the greater Arlington area. Obviously, the focus of our program is on education, so it's teaching job skills. But then you always wonder, what next? So we do provide, try to provide as many job leads as we can. As I mentioned, we do attend job fairs as we can. Uh, interestingly, tomorrow it, we will be attending a job fair virtually here in Arl the Arlington area is the first one that we will be attending that way. Uh, so we do everything we can to try to introduce the ladies to job opportunities in the area. I'm not sure I heard, but they talked about the schedule, your, your semester schedule. Um, can you uh, expound on that just a little bit? What does that mean? I heard every day, is it a certain number of hours that they Yes, end? we um, offer our program twice a year. Now this can change between different sites, but this works for the Arlington site uh, twice a year in the fall and spring. At this time we have a 12 week program. We offer day classes and evening classes. So the evening classes are geared towards women who maybe are working during the day but still want to improve their computer skills. Yes, our day class meets five days a week, 8.30 to 2.30. We follow the local school schedule here. And uh, in the evening, we um, meet four evenings a week uh, for the 12 week period. Um, and then a follow-up question to that was, uh, what curriculum do you use for your personal development and then computer and Bible classes? It's all individual. Uh, some sites will use a curriculum jobs for life. We do not use that. Um, each of our teachers uh, writes her own curriculum. We have a Bible study curriculum that we've used for several years. Uh, has different subject matter, uh, Jesus caring for women, parables, fruit of the spirit, uh, first John, um, that kind of thing for Bible study. Um, our computer curriculum, we use Labyrinth Learning and use their textbooks. Uh, we have a QuickBooks class and we get our curriculum from Labyrinth Learning uh, regarding our QuickBooks class. But Boundaries is written by uh, uh, town and town and oh I forget and Townsend. what's that Cloud and Townsend yes 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 uh, it left me there for a minute so we use that book we use a time management book uh, so it's for each individual class yeah and I, I think I would just add to that for the CWJC sites overall 
Um, there's national oversight because it's a national certification training that has to be done in order to start a site. But each site is responsible for uh, what curriculum they use. So each site is pretty individual, but there is that, that um, umbrella that all sites fall under. Right, and it, the accountability, but, but that's the wonderful thing about the program is that we, we can meet the, the needs of our particular community. So you're a small community, you need to offer maybe different classes than um, our site does. We're in the DFW area, um, so we don't have to provide G, uh, GED or literacy classes. Um, so that's a beautiful thing about the ministry is, is to be able to tailor it to our particular needs of our community. Well, so that kind of leads me into, and Tamika, you can address this. Um, there was a mention about the CWJC sites for men. And so are all of our CWJC sites, are they for men and women? And are, is there different criteria or, or, or tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so you, you can have CWJC or CMJC sites. CMJC. We'll go ahead and give them their own name, CMJC <laughs> site. Um, and same, same deal there, there's training that's necessary in order to start any of those sites. Um, from our standpoint, uh, we will have a position here in our office that's the consultant for the state. Um, and we're filling that position right now. So if you'll go on Texas Baptist and look under uh, employment. However, um, our person is uh, just an undergird and a support um, for the various sites. And so you will have either a CMJC or a CWJC site. But then the prayer is that Thrive 2-7 also comes on board, which is the teen expression um, of uh, CWJC or CMJC. And, and I know the goal there from Becky Ellison was that the story has changed earlier um, in someone's life. And so I'm praying about that. And uh, Tamiko, you mentioned about the resources that are available for folks that um, have a WMU program in their church, whether it's mission friends or GAs. And you mentioned um, that the, there's products that they can order on the national level. Is there also products that they can order here um, within Texas that are a little more attuned to our culture and, and stuff? So right now, all of the missions discipleship products, except for one, um, is, is purchased through National WMU. That helps, you know, all of the curriculum to kind of be the same across the U.S. However, we do have a mentoring model called Embrace. Um, there's no cost for that, and it was just released this past weekend through our ministry grid. And so that is for young adults. Um, and so if, if you'd like to have that, you're welcome to it as well. But right now, all of the missions discipleship products are purchased through National WMU. And if um, I don't have a WMU program at my church and I am intrigued by the information that I have gained here in this wonderful workshop, yes. um, how would I go about doing that if I wanted to start a program in my church? Yeah, there are several ways. The, the best way is just to call us, you know, phone tree, whatever you want to call it. Give us a call. Um, our number here at the office is 214-828-5150. Um, we'd love to talk to you. You can also, if you're on the National WMU website, just looking at the material, um, if you pressed uh, that you want a new start packet, then that information still comes back to us so that we know who's requesting the packet from our state. And we'll definitely be in touch with you that way. But either website, uh, you can get us and we, we'd love to hear from you. Okay, and how can I receive more information on the various WMU of Texas missions, discipleship groups and projects. So can you give us a little more information on some of the different projects? Sure, so um, of course, through our website, uh, you can get the first view there. Um, but then we have consultants um, for D each area. And so we have an age level consultant that handles everything from mission friends or the preschoolers and excuse my light there, I guess it's conserving <laughs> energy. Um, but our, from our mission friends all the way up to the embrace model. And so there's one person that kind of works that area. Um, but we do have consultants for each area um, and they are available to consult virtually now, of course, but then when we're free to visit once again, um, we'd love to travel as well and, and, and come and consult with you in person. And so some churches still have WMU uh, groups and we are so thankful for that. 
but many churches no longer have a group. And so some of the communities are putting together a group. Um, so there are churches that are working together to have a joint group um, so that they can continue to be on mission um, there. So there are many projects and I, I don't even know where you want me to go, Colleen, because I know we, we went through quite a few. I went through most um, that I could in that time that we had in the training, so. Well, and there's times that a church is a, a new start. I think you mentioned about a new church start, you know, not knowing if, and, and if I'm not um, aware of the mission opportunities and the different programs that are available, you know, where do I start? Who do I go to? And so uh, helping us to kind of maneuver through that is helpful. Yes, I, I would definitely start on our website. Um, and then this past weekend, we had a training, a regional training that was virtual. And so now there are over 22 videos for the various areas just to kind of walk you through what we're doing. And so we're, we're excited about building uh, that library to help you. Oh, great, great. That sounds good. Just coming back a little bit to the CWJC, CMJC sites. Um, and if I wanted to volunteer, do, um, I know that they're not all over the state, and of course we're going to have more here in the Metroplex. But say I'm in a in a rural town um, in West Texas, um, are they primarily in our, our bigger cities, our larger churches that are supported, or maybe give us a little more information on that? Well, we do have um, 54 active sites right now here in Texas, and they're all over Texas. And so, if you were to look on the National WMU page. Uh, on, under the Christian Job Corps is what it's called because of the men and the women. Um, if you look under that, you can find all of the sites uh, that are currently in any state, but uh, our sites will be listed there as well. And so um, they're not just in the cities. Mm -hmm. and one of the questions that was asked, and I think Julie, you addressed this, um, that you are an independent 5013C and so um, how those sites are funded. And I'm sure that's a great segue to talk about Mary Hill Davis and the Mary Hill <laughs> Davis offering. And so I, I know there's a specific week that we have a week of prayer and that's, um, sim that's kind of the time that we um, collect that offering and stuff. But say my church isn't very mission oriented or are not familiar with WMU and um, those uh, opportunities. So how can I connect how can I educate my church um, so that we can be a part of the Mary Hill Davis offering and the impact that it has? Yes. So first of all, I'll, I'll start talking um, about CWJC sites. Um, as mentioned, they're independent sites. And so um, Julie mentioned some of the ways that they uh, fundraise for the Arlington site. However, from our standpoint, our goal is to support uh, site leaders in um, the training, um, support through scholarships for uh, those that attend um, the sites and that type of thing. And so that's what we offer from that standpoint. Um, we also have an endowment um, that is specifically geared towards supporting all of the CWJC, CMJC efforts. Um, and we have been funded through the Texas Baptist Missions Foundation for our Thrive 27 efforts both thus far. And so as we talk about the Mary Hill Davis offering, as mentioned on the video, everything Mary Hill Davis can be found at IamTexasMissions.org. And so that includes um, CWJC, that includes our bounce, that includes church starting, um, recharge, all of our African American ministries, our outreach to our Hispanic churches, all of those uh, various videos and whatever you may need to promote in your church or in your community can be found at IamTexasMissions.org. Oh, oh, just, all, I'm sorry, is that site bilingual? Is, do, is, it, uh, is there also Spanish? Yeah. Other language? So it's, it's primary, primarily English right now, the website is. However, the materials for download are offered in several languages, Spanish, um, Korean, um, I believe Laotian is there now, and so they're Vietnamese. There are several uh, languages available. Julie, you were going to add something? Yeah, I just wanted to add, uh, Tamiko had mentioned about the endowments and the scholarships that 
the Mary Hill Davis offering provides. Several of our women through the years have benefited from those scholarships or endowments as they have gone on to continue their education, help them buy books, or even provide transportation if they lived in Arlington and had to travel to Fort Worth for school. So, um, you know, those offerings help in, in ways beyond even uh, CWJC participation. Thank you for sharing that. One question I have, um, you've mentioned several times, Tamiko, that people can download um, mm -hmm. resources. Um, what if I don't have the access to download? Is there other ways to receive yes. those resources? Yes. So in a typical year, we have print pieces and we mail those out. In 2020, we decided to pull back on some of that spending on print pieces just to be good stewards. And so pretty much everything is available for download. However, those that actually call our office and express you know, that need for print material, we actually go ahead and print that out for them and send it. Um, we definitely don't want anyone to be lacking in the materials to be able to share with their churches. Um, so next year we will have our print pieces back, but this year was just a little bit. And how do I, things when you gear back up and start mailing things out, how do I make sure that my church is a receiver of that information? Yes, and so, not only for the Mary Hill Davis offering, um, if you are not aware, we're also responsible for the Lottie Moon and the Annie Armstrong materials here in the state of Texas. And so you can order all of those things from our website, wmutx.org. So that's the main website um, for all of the offerings. And then of course, Mary Hill Davis can come from there or iamtexasmission.org, but you can order those things. Great, so we need to be connected with the WMU office. <laughs> you do. We look forward to connecting with you. <laughs> well, our time's coming to an end. Um, and so just as a, a few final moments here, Julie, if, is there anything that you'd like to share with us that maybe perhaps hasn't been asked or anything that you'd like to add? And then uh, Tamiko, if you'll just wrap us up, um, we'd appreciate that. And then I have a few final words. I just think the main thing is um, for those of you out there listening who maybe are not familiar with CWJC, as I said in the, um, in the workshop, such an important ministry for your community. And um, the WMU provides all of the training, all of the uh, curriculum the, uh, that you would need to start a site. And I would just encourage you to get in touch with Tomiko, ask questions, um, it's not hard, and I tell you, we've, we've graduated over 500 women from our little program itself, and, uh, you know, that's, that's not um, kudos to us. That's the Lord working through our ministry, and he can do the same thing uh, in your, your neck of the woods, so I would just encourage you uh, to follow up with Tomiko about that. For sure. Thank you, Julie, and I, once again, I echo what she's just said. Um, if you don't have a site in your area, consider uh, starting a site. We'd love to help answer any questions you may have. And we certainly thank you, Tech Baptist, for all that you do. Um, even if we've never connected before, your prayers are felt. Um, we, we often talk about the financial part of things. However, we know that prayer changes things. And so we thank you for praying for WMU of Texas. We thank you for praying for these 54 sites. Um, it's not just about the women that come through. We are thankful for them, but it's about their families as well. It's, it's so much bigger than one person. And so uh, we are thankful for everything that God allows us to do, the ways that he continues to allow us to serve. And we thank you for your, your uh, giving to impact uh, what God is doing here in the state of Thank you again. Great information. Again, if there are any questions after we're finished here, um, you can go to the WMU of Texas website. And if they don't answer it on the website, they have a phone number you can call. Sure in. call. And so um, thank you again um, to Miko and Julie uh, for this workshop um, and the many ways that God is working through the lives of so many people and how they impact um, even when we do something as simple as maybe teaching a computer class, that may change someone's entire legacy of life through many generations. And so we appreciate all the great work of WMU and, and the, the Christian Women Job Corps and Christian 
Yeah. And Job Corps, <laughs> Texas, <laughs> and how it impacts the, the kingdom. And so uh, we want to thank today our uh, sponsors. Uh, we have the Hawaiian Baptist Academy um, that sponsored part of this workshop. So thank you very much. And you'll see their information there. And again, uh, WMU of Texas and um, uh, their information is there. I am TexasMissions.org. Um, so note that and um, you'll be able to get all kinds of information there. Um, as a final reminder, we do want to let you know, um, folks, that this workshop was recorded and you can view that on demand. It'll probably be next week before you, it, it'll be uploaded, but you'll tune in on uh, each Tuesday at 2 p.m. for additional workshops leading up to annual meeting um, and we'll premiere a new workshop each week. Um, as a final reminder, um, Again, you can go to txb.org forward slash am to sign up for annual meeting and or to get the workshop on demand. Um, we appreciate everyone that's joined us. Thank you so much and hope you have a great afternoon.